I'm excited to be back. Uh, it's my second year at CSSConf, and welcome to my talk, Why Do We Call HTML Tags Tags? I'm Andres Cuervo, um, and before we get started, I want to tell you a little bit about, a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm an XR artist, a software engineer, and an HCI researcher. Um, so that means that I spend most of my time building web-based uh, VR and AR experiences, demos, artworks, uh, stuff like that. Um, but I also really like nerding out about uh, the history of HTML and CSS. And so that's what this talk is going to be about. So uh, before we answer the question uh, that's the name of this talk, uh, even though I'm sure this audience, being CSS CSSConf, is already familiar, um, it's always good to be really explicit. Uh, so we'll talk, about, uh, talk a little bit about what tags, the, the tags that we're talking about are. Um, so if we view the source of any web page, uh, you'll see a giant HTML document. And it'll have two, two types of things. Um, the first will be the doc type, and that tells you what version of HTML you're looking at. And the rest of the document will be composed of tags. So if we take, for example, the title, uh, the, content of the, the content of the tag is example domain. And that's what appears in your browser tab, uh, in your browser tab as the name. Uh, but the tags themselves are pieces of XML that are surrounded by, um, by greater than and less than symbols. And uh, yeah, so this is what I mean when I'm referring to a tag. And everyone who works on the web uh, has to know this and works, uh, works with this uh, very intimately. And um, oh, a few months back, uh, I was thinking about why we call these things tags. Um, the only two sort of example, or the only two like, definitions for the word tag that I can think of outside of this are the tags, like the things that come on your clothing, and tags, uh, or tag, like the children's game where kids run around and tap each other. Um, and neither of those seem like obviously related to what we're talking about here. Um, and after some Googling, uh, I couldn't really find a simple answer, and that's what led to the development of this talk. So in order to answer where, that word, where this word comes from, um, we have to take a short trip through the history of HTML. And um, the, so the first document to actually standardize HTML uh, was published by Tim Berners-Lee in November of 1995. And it was called Hypertext Markup Language uh, 2.0. And that's because HTML itself had already been around since around 1990. Um, and in it, uh, there's one particular line that's pretty interesting to us, uh, which is HTML documents are SGML documents with generic semantics that are appropriate for representing information from a wide range of domains. And that's just a long-winded way of saying that HTML is good at representing a bunch of different information types. Uh, so at this time, there were only 18 HTML tags. But even with that limited set, people were able to express a bunch of different document types. Um, and that would only grow with the later introduction of more tags and CSS. Um, but for our purposes, this is interesting because it mentions that HTML started off as an SGML document. And so that needs to the, the, the next natural question, which is, what is SGML? Um, so it stands for Standard Generalized Markup Language. And it preceded HTML um, being standardized in 1986. Um, and it contains, it's, it's actually not a markup language itself, but rather it's a meta uh, markup, it's, it's, it's meant to define um, the meta syntax for markup languages that hope to be general themselves. And so uh, it contains two, in, in that mission to stay really broad, it only contains two types of things. The first are called type valid uh, in the document. And these are things that would, uh, that th this is a tag at the top of the document that tells you what type of document you're looking at. And this sounds really familiar uh, because it's the doc type that we saw at the beginning um, in our example HTML file. Um, and then everything else in SGML is known as tag valid, where all of the content in a document is surrounded by an XML tag. Um, and those are the two sorts of things. Um, and this sounds really familiar, uh, because this is what the first version of HTML was specced against. Um, but this doesn't really answer our question, because there is something that even precedes SGML, which is GML. And both of them were created by uh, this person, Charles Goldfarb, at IBM. 
and he talks uh, as early he talks about uh, talking about uh, tags as early as 1969, um, as in the this like sentence fragment where he talks about quote using an unfilled in outline of tags as a prompter from which to create a new document. Um, and so this is where we sort of first see the word tag resemble uh, resemble a thing that we would look we would look at in HTML and recognize, which is as a container for data. And if we were to stop here, this is what the chain uh, would look like, and that's pretty short. Um, but we can we can go further down the rabbit hole and ask where did the tag where did the usage of tag in 1969 come from? Um, and this was easy when we were asking it about HTML because there's a document that tells us it's it's an HTML thing. Um, but so far as I could find, there was no there was really no reference to where the word tag came from in uh, in the original versions of GML and XML, which were developed alongside each other. And so, in order to get at this question, uh, I, I took a, I borrowed a page from a field called etymology. Um, so let's talk about that for a second. Um, Etymology is defined as the study of the origin of words and the way in which their meanings have changed throughout history. And so typically, uh, etymology is used to study uh, words uh, through hundreds of years or thousands of years of change. And so if we take the word cascade, as in cascading style sheets, um, then we can see that it comes to English uh, from this long series of French, Italian, and Latin um, for to fall. And that makes sense because the definitions are pretty related, um, and that it, it's actually a pretty old word in English coming in uh, sometime in the mid, in mid 17th century. Um, and so while this is a much more involved process, um, we can take a cue from what uh, etymologists and linguists do here by trying to find the earliest instance of the word tag in computing. Um, and so in, uh, in trying to research this question, uh, the earliest instance that I can find uh, is credited to this person, uh, Emile Leon Post. And Post was a uh, computer scientist, uh, a, or, or he was a mathematician, um, but he made uh, sort of fundamental inroads in theoretical computer science. Um, he was a contemporary of Alan Turing's, um, and he was a logician and a mathematician. Um, so he introduced this idea of a tag system in a paper in 1943 uh, called Formal Reductions of the General Combinatorial Decision Problem. And while we won't go through the whole paper, um, it's useful to understand uh, what it's doing uh, in order to understand why, why, the, why the word tag is appropriate here. Um, so the paper itself is describing a computational model for producing words, uh, arbitrary words, from production rules. And that sounds really abstract and hand wavy. Um, so here is a very, very minified example. Um, if we have a, if we have a very simple alphabet that only has four letters in it, A, B, C, and H, and we, we say that whenever we see an A, we add on this string, C, C, B, A, H, and whenever we see a B, we add on C, C, A, and so on with C and C, C, then we can take any initial word and start transforming it. Um, so if we start with BAA, then we take a look at that first letter, and we see that B goes to CCA, and so we tack that on. And then there is a formula for every time we pick a production rule, we uh, truncate the front of the string with some amount of letters, or by some amount of letters, and that changes throughout the string. But the one fundamental thing is that you keep tacking on the end of, uh, to the end of the string that preceded it until you finally hit a letter uh, that you can no longer produce a production rule for, or you reach a chain that, you, uh, that is so small that you can't delete anything from it. Um, and so yeah, uh, if we look at this sequence, uh, not only does this look like a little stack, uh, but it looks like the ends of each, uh, each successive word are sort of chasing each other. And in fact, there is a footnote from that original paper, uh, footnote 12 if you're curious, um, where Post credits this person, uh, BP Gill, with, with noting that the, um, that the axioms look like they're chasing each other, and so he, gave, he suggested the name tag. And so, in fact, in this usage, uh, we're, Post would have called this a tag operation. Um, and while this usage is slightly different, uh, it's, it's probably uh, fair to say that one, uh, Emil Post's work was uh, really well received uh, during his time, and two, it, it would go on to influence language designers um, in the next, uh, in the preceding decades. Um, 
And so, yeah, there's, there's sort of two possibilities. Um, one is that the, that the word tag comes from the common, um, the common word for like a tag, to tag a piece of clothing. Um, but this, this, this fi like finding this evidence um, s seems to point to the children's game of tag influencing BP guilt. Um, and so this is the final chain of etymology that I came up with uh, for where we get the word uh, tag in HTML. Um, and the word for the children's game actually comes as far back as the 1700s. And so that led BP Gill to suggest to Post to use the word tag for his uh, seminal paper. And that, I'm speculating, uh, sort of made its way into the lexicon of computer scientists where someone at IBM would later create GML and SGML. And that would go on to influence uh, the very first specs of HTML. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, this is, I, I hope that this talk uh, sort of does two things for you. Um, one, that it interests you in etymology a little bit, um, because I think it's really cool. And that two, um, I hope that it sort of encourages you to take a look at the, at the history of things that you might have overlooked or seen as mundane. Um, because if you, whether it's in your work or in your personal life, there are probably a million things around you that you don't realize uh, have probably surprising and pretty interesting histories. Um, yeah, and that's all I have.